the next one will be a Latin talk by Eugene Boa, uh, and he's a so senior software development engineer at Luxoft, and it will, will be about Dapper. Yeah, so welcome. Hello everyone, my name is Jebhen Bova, I am a Java developer at Luxoft and this is a lighting talk on, on Dapper. Let's start right away. Uh, so Dapper is advertised as event-driven portable runtime for building microservices on cloud and edge. The project was, uh, was started uh, uh, as an open source project uh, by Microsoft and the initial version was released about uh, uh, one and a half year ago. And production grade version uh, was released a, a month ago, so it's really um, a fresh project. Uh, let's take a look at the high level uh, architecture diagram of Dapper. Uh, so on the top layer, uh, we see application code, uh, which is really a microservice uh, that's, written, uh, that's written in any language um, of your choice. You know, for example, you can use uh, Java, um, programming language and Sprint Boot as a framework. Um, Dapper really doesn't impose a limitation of on, on programming language or framework. Uh, so underneath uh, uh, there is a Dapper process uh, that runs on the same uh, machine uh, next to next to the application next to the microservice, and application code can call Dapper to access several ser uh, services that Dapper exposes uh, through HTTP API and gRPC API, and it's up to developer to decide uh, which interface to use. Let's go through uh, through the list of services. Service-to-service uh, -service invocation uh, it allows you uh, if you have a service A and you want to call a service B, um, uh, you can do that through Dapper, and Dapper will do service uh, discovery of automatic. Uh, retries on errors uh, and traffic uh, traffic encryption. Uh, state management uh, API allows uh, you uh, to save and restore um, your application state uh, state if your application state is something like a key value pair. Uh, publish and subscribe uh, uh, this is, can be used as an alternative to service. Uh, to uh, service to service invocation uh, for asynchronous uh, communication uh, and we'll have an example of that. So resource binding and triggers is something really similar to publish and subscribe. It, it allows you to trigger your code based on some event and save uh, the result to, uh, to external resource. Uh, actors is the implementation of actor pattern and the observability um, it gives you um, metrics and, and 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 distributed tracing. Uh, there is no API uh, for this, uh, but if you use service-to-service -service invocation or state uh, or publish and subscribe, for example, um, you would see distributed tracing. Uh, yeah, and you just get this for free from Dapper. Um, and secrets uh, allows you uh, to get secrets at at, at runtime secrets uh, like. Uh, uh, username, password, uh, and tokens uh, to ex uh, to external services. Uh, and underneath, uh, yeah, so Dapper can can use can can be run on on cloud cloud platform on Kubernetes uh, or uh, on premise on your machine or microcontroller in IoT environment. Let's take a look at the uh, uh, pub uh, pub sub API. So, for example. Uh, uh, we have three applications. Um, one is card, and we would like to send a message to other um, applications, uh, shipping and email. And what we do, uh, we execute a POST request uh, to uh, to Dapper, and Dapper will delegate that call and will push uh, this message uh, to a configured messaging system. So in this case, it can be Redis, and it can be Kafka, or it can be a managed uh, service uh, in the cloud, um, and on the other side, um, the other application uh, subscribe uh, to the messaging system through the Dapper, and Dapper will call uh, configure it endpoint 
uh, when new messages arrive. Uh, Dubber does provide some uh, uh, language-specific libraries for convenience. Um, Java is supported, and it also uh, there's also a service extension for Spring Boot. Uh, so, for example, it all, it provides a custom annotation. Uh, if you use that, if you annotate uh, your REST and your your um, method in REST controller, uh, it it will start receiving uh, the messages from from the messaging system. Uh, so here are some pros and cons. Uh, what I found out is that for simple workflows such as pops up and uh, saving restoring state, uh, it is easy to implement such things in uh, in Dapper. And there is no need to deal with different third-party SDKs, drivers, and etc. Implementation of components as state management pops up can be replaced easily. It's just a matter of changing configuration file. Uh, it encourages developers to use best practices, patterns, and is uh, language agnostic. You really can use any language. Um, it doesn't add much latency. It's about a couple of milliseconds. And I also think that Dapper is well documented. There is uh, doc documentation for API, SDK, and deployment. Uh, some of the cons are uh, uh, some of the disadvantages of Dapper. So API uh, provides a small subset of features of the alignment component. So if you use uh, Kafka directly, for example, for publish and subscribe, you would see that it provides more flexibility. Um, it, it provides manipulation of uh, uh, of index, and you can. Uh, uh, Re replay uh, the messages. Um, there is no such thing in Dapper. It's literally uh, publish and subscribe. Um, it also uh, restricts um, versions of inline components. For example, as of now, Dapper supports only Redis 5 and 6. If you use Redis 4 in production, well, as of now, you, you can't use Dapper. Um, it makes it harder to launch the bug and, and the back apps on the dev side uh, because you need to uh, launch uh, your application uh, and Dapper process. And there is no good supporting IDE yet, uh, at least what I found in Eclipse uh, uh, IDE. Uh, and it, there is, uh, for, for, Intel, for IntelliJ IDE, the situation is the same. You are on, you are on your own, you need to launch uh, Dapper as external process. And you, for this, you would uh, you will need to uh, create launcher manually, and there is there is an extension for Visual Studio Code. Uh, if you use that, so yeah, you can take a look take a look at that. And it requires extra service on the server side uh, in the Kubernetes control plane, uh, just a couple of ports. Uh, it adds complexity to infrastructure, yeah, because Dapper is a side sidecar, you know, the separate pro separate process. Um, it overlaps with service meshes like Istio, LinkRD, so features like MTLS, uh, resiliency, distributed uh, tracing overlap, and you need to think about it. Uh, so, okay, I would like to encrypt uh, encrypt my traffic. Uh, so, uh, do I need to use Dapper uh, to do the encryption, or do I, do I need to use uh, Istio for that? Yeah, and um, Dapper should work with, with service meshes like Istio and, and LinkRD uh, if you configure them properly. And maturity status, uh, what I, was, I see right now is that a lot of components in alpha experimental state, but this, this should uh, improve and low adoption. That not much, uh, not many companies uh, use Dapper as of now. Uh, we have been using uh, we have been uh, using Dapper internally for evaluation purposes for um, for a couple of months now. Um, so I guess there are some uh, references for you if you are interested in more details uh, uh, on Dapper. Uh, thank you very much and enjoy your conference. Thank you, Eugen. Uh, so it's really great article about uh, Dapper. I think it's a great chance to touch it and try to use uh, in your own projects.